So welcome back to Hoosier Hardware, and today we're focusing on a new meta for these Dell Optiplex gaming PCs. That is taking an old Dell Optiplex and just transitioning it over into a nice, very inexpensive gaming PC. For those of you looking for the cheapest way to get into PC gaming, this is basically that. You take an old pre-built that was probably used either in a school, an office, some sort of business, that sort of thing. You slap in a GPU and you're off to the races gaming at, uh, in this case, 1080p gaming performance, which is actually really, really good. And it's a new meta because we're actually starting to see these Haswell CPUs in some of these Optiplexes get to the point where they are very inexpensive. It used to be we would basically just be stuck with Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs, that 2000 and 3000 generation of Intel CPUs. Now we're on to the 4000 generation where we see these Haswell chips getting quite affordable. So we're going to talk about a couple of these uh, Dell Optiplex 7020s that I have in the office today, and then we're going to take a look at a few games. Now before we get into talking about these Dell 7020s that I have in the office today, I do want to go ahead and plug a couple of videos from other creators that sort of feed into why this new meta of affordable Haswell systems is actually a big deal. The first one comes from the Toasty Bros that actually just showed a really nice tutorial recently of basically how to put together one of these Optiplex gaming systems. So if you're interested in actually putting one of these together, I'm not going over bit by bit how you actually install everything, but I will go ahead and link that Toasty Bros video in the description down below because it's a great how-to of buy this, buy this graphics card, slap it in, and you're done. But it's a good step-by-step -step guide, I'll link that. And then also down below is a video that the Game Bench just came out with, and that's a big one because it shows these uh, these Intel systems going back to the 2000 generation of CPU, the 3000 generation, and now the Haswell CPUs. It shows how we've seen gains in gaming performance from the more recent generations. Specifically, the Haswell chips are doing much better than the Sandy and Ivy Bridge chips, which is why this new meta of having affordable Haswell-based Dell Optiplex systems is really good for gamers because you are getting a legitimate upgrade from Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge chips to the Haswell generation CPUs. You're going to see that actually in gaming performance where you just generally get a better experience from something like an i5-4590, uh, which we are featuring in these builds today, versus something like an i5-3470 or even a 3570, something like that. So this new meta isn't a huge shift, obviously. We're still seeing Dell Optiplex systems. They still look virtually identical. The biggest change here is that we go from that 3000 generation, the 3470s were just sort of the, the go-to CPU where you could get a Dell Optiplex with a 3470, eight gigs of RAM, and 500 gigabyte hard drive for around $100. Now we're seeing that affordability come to the Haswell systems, which just basically translates to better gaming performance. Now in our systems today, there are a few parts that we did swap out just to give us a better sort of experience overall. First and foremost, I got two of these Dell Optiplex systems together. So fully shipped to my door, they were right at $75 a piece and they were shipped together. So I probably did save a little bit on shipping costs by buying two of them, but that breaks down to 75 a piece. They were just under $150 total shipped to my door. So the big downside to these Haswell systems actually it's really one of the only downsides versus some of the older generation Optiplexes is that the power supply is a little bit different in that instead of the standard 24 pin ATX connector, we're actually featuring an eight pin uh, sort of proprietary connector here. I don't know that it's completely proprietary, but it's a non-standard mainboard connector. So you have to get an adapter. Those are readily available on Amazon. They're usually around 10, 12 bucks per adapter somewhere in there. I'll go ahead and link the ones that I actually bought so you can check pricing down below. But the adapter does add, at least in my case, about $10 per PC. So we're up to about $85 for the entire system. Now the systems I got feature the i5-4590, eight gigabytes of RAM in a two by four configuration. So we actually still have two slots on our motherboard available in case we want to upgrade to 16 gigabytes. They are running at 1600 megahertz and my systems came with 500 gigabyte hard drives as well. 
Now in my case, I'm also adding about another $24, $25 for a 120 gigabyte SSD just to make the boot drive just much snappier. So we end up with a storage configuration of a 120 gigabyte SSD and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now all of the games were tested on my test bench SSD. So uh, none of the storage was actually used in the actual testing of uh, the games just for simplicity's sake. It's easier for me to just slap in the test bench SSD and go from there. So we are using an SSD for the game testing in this case. So we have $75, we have uh, $25 for about the SSD. So we're up to about 100, then the $10 adapter, we're about $110. And then for the GPU, we're throwing in one of those RX 470s that I sort of bought in bulk recently. And that's gonna add about 50-ish dollars to the build. I bought them in two separate lots, so it's a little bit harder to track exactly how much they were a piece. They were definitely less than 60, but they were definitely more than 50. So we'll call it 50 just for simplicity's sake to get us to 160-ish dollars for this build. And then the power supply did get swapped out and I threw in a 350 watt Dell Vostro power supply. And the nice thing about doing this is first of all, these Vostro power supplies are readily available on eBay for $20, $25. Uh, really just check the description to see if the seller is testing them to make sure they still work. I've not had bad experiences with them, which makes sense because these power supplies are being put in a huge number of systems, or at least they were, so it's likely that they're fairly well engineered to last. And that does give us plenty of wattage for the system. The thing I really love about these Vostro power supplies is they do have that six pin PCIe connector to plug directly into the graphics card at full system load. This system runs at about 230 watts and that's under a synthetic benchmark of CPU and GPU. Under real world load, we're really closer to 200 watts. Regardless, I got my power supply for around $20. Again, I sort of buy these in bulk because I do know that I'm gonna be putting several systems together with them and then getting them out the door later on down the road. So we're up to a total ish of $180, somewhere in that range, give or take. I haven't actually added up all the dollars and cents specifically, but we are well under $200 for a system that features an i5 processor on the Haswell generation, the 4590, eight gigs of RAM. We have 120 gigabyte SSD, 500 gigabyte hard drive, and an RX 474 gigabyte card. So with that said, let's jump into the benchmarks and see just how well this sub $200 gaming PC actually performs. Now for benchmarks today, we actually have four games instead of our standard three. We are adding Call of Duty Warzone to the benchmarks here, and this is the solo battle royale. Uh, this game is kind of hard to benchmark just because every run is a little bit different, just like all battle royale games. And I did sort of run this benchmark in a variety of environments, outside, inside, around people, not around people. I sort of took the averages of all those runs. So what we see here is this system does really, really well in Warzone. We saw an average FPS of 96, 1% low of 59, and a 0.1% low of 40. And the only thing that that I saw that was kind of negative was in the sort of loading area where there's all the people fighting right before you actually jump off the plane. There was a little bit of stutter here and there, but once you're in the game and everyone's actually spread out because these maps are very large, uh, I didn't see any of that whatsoever. It was a very enjoyable experience, so a definite pass in this title. Metro Exodus was also a fairly solid experience, seeing an average FPS in the built-in benchmark of 56 and a 1% low of 32. Didn't really see a whole lot of stuttering or anything that was overly negative. Obviously a very playable experience in this title as well. Red Dead Redemption 2 remains a very consistent experience. It's a title that, at least in the built-in benchmark, I very seldom see a lot of variance between the average and the 0.1% low. That holds true here. If you're somebody that can play games at 30 FPS, then this title is going to work just fine on this system. We saw an average FPS of 39, a 1% low of 31, and a 0.1% low of 26, which obviously is a little bit lower than we'd really like to see. But at the end of the day, this is still a very playable experience, especially with that 1% low still above that awesome cinematic 30 FPS. And Borderlands 3 remains one of the games that I'm most concerned about, at least as far as new games go, and that's because of this huge variance between average and 0.1% lows. Now I saw an average FPS of 65, a 1% low of 51, but that 0.1% low of 23 is really far down there, and that's just simply a result of there are stutters in this game when you're running with this hardware configuration. And that's just something to be aware of as you go through with some of these older Optiplexes. It would definitely help if you threw in an i7 processor or 
or one of these Xeons that features four cores and eight threads to help smooth that out a little bit. But what we're seeing there with that 0.1% low is the result of just a stutter here and there. It's not all the time by any means, and I would still call this a very playable experience, but you are gonna see a hitch in the FPS and the frame rate here and there as you play through this game. So there's really not much of a conclusion today other than these Dell Optiplex systems are still like the cheapest way to get into PC gaming. You do sacrifice some forward compatibility. Obviously with an i5 system, you can go ahead and upgrade to an i7 processor, which legitimately will give you some pretty solid performance even in 2020. These Optiplex systems do give you room for a GPU upgrade as well, though with the power supply that I did include, uh, that's gonna limit your upgrade path a little bit. Obviously if you're Taylor, sort of building this system out for yourself and you're expecting to upgrade to a much stronger GPU down the road that's much more uh, power consuming, we'll say, then you may wanna grab a more powerful power supply from the get-go just so you don't have to swap out the power supply again down the road. Obviously, the great thing about PC gaming is you can tailor build PCs to your needs and that even goes for a lot of these pre-builds. Like these Optiplexes, sure, the motherboard's sort of tied to the Optiplex, but you can still upgrade the CPU, the RAM, the power supply, even if you do need that adapter. You can upgrade the storage, the GPU, just everything's upgradable about these systems to the point that they're still a Haswell system and you can't really upgrade much past that, but it is a great way to get started in PC gaming if you're on a pretty tight budget, which I know a lot of people are on quite a tight budget, even uh, more so now when, with everything going on right now, it's probably a little bit worse, but this is a great way to get started. Hit up eBay for these Dell Optiplex 7020s or similar Haswell models. I know they had a couple different Dell Optiplexes that featured those Haswell CPUs as well. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think of this build in those comments down below. What might you change out about it? How could you save a little bit of money? What GPU might you throw in there instead? Let me know all your thoughts in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, this is probably the last Optiplex build for a while. I don't really have any on order or anything like that. But if you want to see more used PC builds and that sort of thing, that's sort of what I'm all about. So hit that like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Heart. Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.